There once was a time when everything was simple, different bikes had different functions, so if you wanted a bike to tour, to take your lady out for the weekend, you would buy a Harley-Davidson Electra Glide. It's a heavy bike, but it's a comfortable bike, and it's got huge saddlebags and a big top case. But in the world of motoring, we have a trend to merge different functionalities into one vehicle. You can see it in cars where we have not just crossovers, but even four-door off-road-like coupes. And in case of motorbikes, you have things like Honda CDX 1300. It's a bit of a cruiser, a bit of a sports tour, and theoretically, it can even serve as your everyday city runabout. Of course, Honda has its great Goldwing, which directly competes against the Electra, but today I want to see whether it's worth paying 27,000 euros and more for a Harley Davidson when you can have a more versatile bike for about two thirds of the price. Let's start with the Harley. Even if you don't know much about motorcycles, you probably know the Electra. Perhaps you don't know what it's called, but you've seen it many times and you've heard it passing by. You can't mistake it for anything else. Also riding it, you know the hot lump of metal between your thighs is a Harley. The vibrations are unmistakable. Apparently some people like it. However, as part of the Project Rushmore, Harley-Davidson clients demanded some improvements. One of the things you notice instantly is the infotainment system with a touchscreen, sat-nav, radio and Bluetooth connectivity. No more cables. Whether you have an intercom or an MP3 player, it's all seamless now. Or you can plug in a player into the USB port, which is in this little compartment here that's lined with foam. And all the switches are on the handlebars. That's very practical. Another novelty is liquid cooling. Now it may sound like blasphemy to the true Harley Davidson fans, but the less hardcore users want minimum comfort from a bike which costs as much as a decent car. Anyway, the radiators are well concealed. If I didn't know about them, I wouldn't have noticed. The Electra is a cruiser, a slow touring bike. Even on the motorway, riding above 100 km per hour is unpleasant because you can't hear the speakers and because of turbulence. Okay, so maybe if I was a bit taller or this little air vent here didn't break. But the passenger in the back will fall asleep, I know I have done so. The best way to travel on the Electra is on flat roads with long curves going around 70-80 km per hour. Although Harley-Davidson does not provide official power figure, the registration card says Electra has 85 horsepower, torque is close to 140 newton meters, and there's a six-speed gearbox with a double pedal so you don't damage your boots when upshifting. As long as you've got around 2,000 revs, you just twist the throttle and over 400 kilograms leaps forward. It's amazing how this composed Electra leaps from the lights like a boulder shot from a medieval catapult. Now, this comparison to a medieval catapult is no accident. Compared to the competition, well, this bike feels like it arrived from the medieval times. Rear suspension clunks on potholes. Gearbox sounds like a blacksmith's workshop. And the exhaust rolls like a dragon. The whole thing is covered in a shiny and damn heavy armor. Maneuvering the Electra is like parking an 18-wheeler. I expect some of you will now tell me something nasty about my riding skills in the comments below, but for someone who rides a city bike every day, the Electra is a monster and it could use a reverse gear, which the Goldwing has. From this perspective, the Honda CDX 1300 is like a maxi scooter. The riding position is comfortable, close to that on the Electra. However, the Honda is some 70 kilograms lighter. It's got 84 horsepower and 106 newton meters of torque. 
The engine is a significantly down-tuned V4 known from the pan-European. From standstill, the CTX 1300 will surprise Sunday riders, but on the go it lacks flexibility. And it only has 5 gears. And again, Honda was stingy and didn't add a gear indicator. Does it really cost that much to add one for every bike a standard? It's particularly irritating because unlike the Hurley's gearbox, Honda's is so light you can almost shift gears with your thoughts. In a heavy motorcycle boot it's difficult to tell which gear I just put the bike in. And to make things worse, the shifter is very close to the body of the bike. Uh, I have to twist my ankle inwards. And, you know, it's a cruiser, not a sports bike. I'm supposed to be relaxed and comfortable rather than clutch the bike with my thighs. Compared to just about any Harley-Davidson, the CTX 1300 also sounds like a maxi scooter. But you can turn a blind eye or rather a deaf ear to that. You can just roll and listen to your favorite tune. Well, not really. Above 70 km per hour you can't hear anything, so you have to switch to helmet speakers. That's if you got any. On paper it probably made sense, but in real life it doesn't. And someone forgot to put the audio controls on the handlebars. If you want to change the song, you have to take one hand off the handlebar. The same goes for the trip computer. And there is no cruise control. And to pair Bluetooth or even set the clock, you have to look into the owner's manual. Honda CTX 1300 is easy to drive and decent around town, although the handlebars somewhat obstruct visibility in rare view mirrors. If you forget about the whining exhaust note, it's pleasant enough to ride. But more ambitious riders, beware of low ground clearance. Footpeg dragging may be an issue. Both bikes have saddlebags. Of course, the Electra also has the huge top box which doubles as backrest for the passenger and a boombox when it's empty. Unfortunately, Honda's panniers have irregular shape inside, so it's more difficult to pack. The Electra or CTX. If you ride every day, not just on the weekends, get a Honda. But if motorcycle rallies are your game, Harley is what you want.